Hello, my name is Fabian van der Mers and I'm R&D Technical Leader at Quality Assistance. Today, I'm going to present data on the validation of a monocyte activation test in order to detect pyrogens in pharmaceutical products. Pyrogens are substances that can cause life-threatening fever reactions. The main source of pyrogens is endotoxin that come from gram-negative bacteria. However, substances coming from gram-positive bacteria yeast, viruses or molds, as well as environmental particles, can also induce pyrogenic effect. For these reasons, the presence of pyrogens must be evaluated in parenteral pharmaceutical products. As shown at the bottom, different types of assays can be used to detect pyrogens. For a long time, the reference method was the rabbit pyrogen test. In this test, products are injected in rabbit and body temperature is measured in order to detect fever reaction. Due to the variability of the results and 3R principle, other techniques such as LAL, which use limulus amebocyte lysate, or recombinant factor C assay were developed. These in vitro assays are less time consuming, but only allows for the detection of endotoxins. Indeed, non endotoxin pyrogens can't be detected by this method. In 2010, monocyte activation test was implemented in the European Pharmacopeia. This in vitro assay allows for the detection of all pyrogens and is based on the reaction between pyrogens and human monocytes. Indeed, when pyrogens enter into the organism, they are detected by monocytes through their toll like receptors. After the interaction, monocytes release pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1-beta, IL-6, TNF-alpha or interferon-gamma. In monocyte activation tests, different types of cells can be used. The wall blood, peripheral blood mononuclear cells or monocytic cell line. After incubation of monocytes in the presence of the products, cytokines are detected using an immunoassay such as ELISA. Monocyte activation test was introduced in the European Pharmacopeia in 2010 as an alternative companion method. Before its use in a routine in a GMP environment, a product-specific validation must be performed. Three options are proposed in the Pharmacopeia. Method A, which is a quantitative test. Method B, which is a semi-quantitative test. And method C, which is a reference lot comparison test. Only method A will be addressed during this presentation. In order to validate this method, four criteria must be evaluated. First, the validity of the endotoxin standard curve must be checked in terms of effect of dose and goodness of fit. At least four standards must be tested in quadruplicate. Secondly, the determination of interfering factors. Samples must be diluted at a dilution that doesn't exceed the maximal valid dilution. At that dilution, when sample is spiked with endotoxin standard, recovery must be within 50 to 200 percent range. At least three different batches of the product must be tested during the product-specific validation. Thirdly, the detection of non-endotoxin pyrogens. Two other ligands have to be tested, such as it kills Staphylococcus aureus, a TLR2 ligand, or bacterial flagellin, TLR5 ligand. Optical densities measured in the presence of non endotoxin pyrogens must be higher than the signal obtained for the limit of detection. Finally, the absence of interference of the sample with the detection system must be proven. A dilution series of IL-6 is measured by ELISA, in the presence or absence of the diluted sample. The agreement between both dilution series must be within plus or minus 20% of the optical density. In this study, we validated the monocyte activation test using a pyromat kit from Merck on a nanoparticle product. In terms of protocol, the experiment is divided in two days. On the first day, standard curve and samples are prepared in endotoxin-free water and put in contact with the monomax 6 monocytic cell line. After 24 hours of culture at 37 degrees in a humidified environment and in absence of carbon dioxide, culture supernatants are harvested and tested for IL-6 detection using an ELISA. 
If we move to the data, a standard curve using the endotoxin international reference standard was first run to verify that the criteria for endotoxin standard curve were valid. During method validation, two different calibration curves were carried out in two separate runs. In each run, seven endotoxin concentrations from 0.8 to 0.0125 EU per ml were analyzed in quadruplicate. Experimental points were fitted using a five-parameter logistics regression model using SoftMax Pro software. An example of standard curve is presented at the left of the slide. As observed in the table at the right side, all criteria were met. Optical densities were higher than 3.0 for the standard one and lower than 0.1 for the blanks. Goodness of fit and effect of those criteria were also met. About the limit of detections, in all runs, the theoretical load, which is 0.05 EU per ml, was reached. For the product-specific validation, the evaluation of interference factor must be determined on three different sample batches. Each batch is diluted in at least three serial dilution using geometric steps, not exceeding the maximum valid dilution. In our case, 10-fold, 20-fold and 40-fold dilution of the sample were tested, with or without a spike at 0.2 EU per ml. All conditions were analyzed in quadruplicate. As seen in the table, low recovery was obtained for the 10-fold dilution of batch 2. Based on this result, we can conclude that an interference was detected at a 10-fold dilution for one out of the three batches tested. 20-fold dilution was therefore the lowest valid dilution. Looking at the inspired conditions, all samples show endotoxin concentrations lower than the limit of detection. As most site activation tests should detect both endotoxin and non-endotoxin pyrogens, the validation requires testing the detection of at least two non-endotoxin pyrogens. To this end, ill kill Staphylococcus aureus and flagellin were spied in the 24 diluted sample. Non-endotoxin pyrogens are considered as detected if back calculated concentrations are higher than the experimental limit of detection. As we can see on this table, we can conclude that non-endotoxin pyrogens were detected in the three batches prepared at the lowest valid dilutions. After the determination of the optimal dilution, this dilution needs to be tested for interferences with the detection system. A dilution series of IL-6 control was tested in the absence and presence of the sample prepared at the lowest valid dilution. 24 dilution in our case. The agreement between the dilution series in the presence and absence of the preparation being examined must be within plus or minus 20% when comparing optical densities. As observed in this graph, we can conclude that no interference with the detection system was observed as optical density variation didn't exceed 20% when preparing the presence or absence of the sample matrix at the lowest value dilution. After this validation, QC routine tests will be performed using three different dilutions, 20, 40, and 80-fold dilutions of the sample, as described in the European Pharmacopeia. The following plate layout is now used for routine experiments. Each sample dilution is tested with and without endotoxin spike in order to check the validity of the test. It kills Staphylococcus aureus is used as additional control for the detection of non-endotoxin pyrogens within the lowest dilution of the sample. A maximum of two different samples can be tested per plate. In conclusion, we were able to successfully validate the monocyte activation test when the sample is 24 diluted. This test has been shown as a good alternative to the LAL assay for the detection of endotoxins. Moreover, monocyte activation test has additional advantages. It allows for the detection of non-endotoxin pyrogens. It involves a human immune response mechanism, and it doesn't require the use of animals. Finally, if you wish to access more information on monocyte activation tests, an application note is available for download on our website.